problem is once we get to that ridge, we're exposed. There are people in this world that go looking for adventure. And then there are those that live it every day. Alaska Outdoors Television. Experience Alaska like never before. So this particular sheep hunt we're coming off last year's hunt where Matthew was able to take a beautiful doll ram. We decided to go into a new area this year. I don't recall if Matthew and I flipped a coin or how we decided, but we were fighting over who was going to get the first shot on, uh, on the first legal ram uh, up here in the mountains. But it was just a, an exciting trip. When we came over this runway just to look at it, that wolf was just right at the end of the runway. Actually, the night we landed there, there was a wolf. Big old black wolf right off the end of the runway. It was the coolest thing, because you don't get to see wolves very often. Opener's tomorrow, right? Yep. So, three panel ways, and then look up in the morning, and hopefully get two. Right on. So what do you think, about five miles up, you want to go? Sure. Yeah. We made our way up. We were full of excitement. Uh, couldn't wait to see our first sheep. Uh, after all, it was uh, right at the beginning of sheep hunting season, and we were anxious to uh, get our first crack at a sheep. Whoa. We saw some brown bear tracks on the way, um, wolverine tracks, ptarmigan tracks. Just need to find some sheep tracks. <laughs> So we'll drop our gear and then we'll take a look to see if those sheep are in that valley below the glacier or whether they're across the big gorge. And then if they're across the big gorge, we'll decide whether to go across today or go across tomorrow morning, okay? okay. So as you're stalking these sheep and even before the stock, as you're hiking in the mountains, once you get out of that tent, you need to be in sheep hunting mode. You need to stay low, and you need to pay attention uh, way out ahead of you, not just a couple hundred yards, not just a thousand yards, but you know, a mile away. The sheep are smart. They're very, very smart. And if you're below them, they're going to see you unless you really work hard to to move when, when they're not looking, move when they're moving. Um, and typically there's more than one sheep. And so you don't just have two eyes looking out for you, you have several. There may be uh, a magnificent doll sheep ram sitting on top of a mountain two miles away, just gazing down at you. And you've missed your opportunity because you're skylining yourself in an area that you know, there are no sheep and you don't think that the sheep are anywhere around to see you. And you may never realize this because that sheep is long gone by the time you get up to, to where he was sitting. You have to be quiet, you have to be stealth, and you have to uh, watch where you're going. So we've got some challenges here with crossing this gorge. What we have is a glacier that comes down from uh, our left and we have the big glacier out in front of us to the right with a big uh, lake right down in the middle. We've got ice surrounding it. We have steep, steep uh, banks surrounding it. And so trying to get across that ice and uh, you know, not hurting ourselves is going to be a little bit of a challenge. So nothing comes easy when you're sheep hunting. On the way to going to where we were gonna make our camp, uh, we had to cross quite a few rivers. And some were getting close to the top of our hip waders and those rivers they were really cold and those rocks are just 
horrible trying to walk over. As with uh, most sheep hunts, you can't quite get all the way in on day one. So uh, Matthew and I stopped short of where we expected to find sheep and made camp for the night. The first day of hunting, so this is day two of the sheep hunt, uh, day one of the actual hunting portion of the trip. So Matthew and I were just talking about it. We're gonna sit here for a minute and just be patient and wait. Sometimes it's tough to do, but we're gonna try that for a little bit. And then we're gonna make our way up the drainage, crossing these ravines and looking down into the ravines, looking for the sheep. I'm guessing that ravine over there, Matthew, where the fog is right now, yeah. that's where I'm guessing they are. I think if we get up by these snowshoes and over, we'll be right on top of them. You wanna do that? Yeah. All right, man. Let's do it. Let's go get them. Matthew and I make our way up this mountain and we're side hilling. You gain elevation and then you decrease elevation into these ravines. And the whole time, you have to be so quiet so that the sheep don't see you, you don't skyline yourself, so you're almost walking or crawling uh, on your hands and knees to try to avoid being seen by sheep. I predicted they were going to be in the next drainage over, and we were here glassing, and I peeked my head over, and there's at least one ram right there. We've been watching him. Matthew just range bound, did a range finder on him, and he's 327 yards and coming this way. He's a ram, but we can't tell the size of his horn yet because he has his head down. He's not giving us a great look. We have to find a vantage point. We can just try to go up and let them just work their way into view. Yeah, not a bad idea. All right. Good suggestion. Let's do it. Those sheep walked right down below us. And as they grazed below us, they had no idea that we were there. It was, it was just one of those moments that may not ever come around again in my lifetime of sheep hunting, when you had nine beautiful doll sheep right below us, feeding below us and not knowing that we were there. As we, as we sat there uh, glassing these rams, they moved up closer and closer and closer to us. And at one point in time, we had a ram 28 yards away from us, which was really neat. The um, two biggest rams, which were really nice, beautiful rams, were uh, 80 and 82 yards away. So you could, you could really count the rings on their, on their horns with the spotting scope. as we peeked our head over this next ridge, there were nine rams down there. We just need to get in position and take a really good look with the binoculars, make sure they're good rams. Matthew and I were able to sit there for about an hour and analyze every sheep in that group, looking to see whether uh, the sheep was a complete full curl ram or whether the sheep had enough rings to be legal. But I'm not exactly sure what, if it was us or a combination of us and something else, but they hightailed it out of there and they just kept going and going and going uh, all the way to the top of the mountain. Then they sat up there and watched us for a while. Uh, in that group of rams as we watched them, 
go away. There's one really big ram. As you look at the full curl on a ram, if you're up above the mountain and looking down at a 30 or 40 degree angle, um, that, that horn is going to actually look shorter than what it is. Uh, by contrast, if you're looking up a, a mountain, a lot of people make a mistake of, of shooting a ram because the horn looks like it, it goes all the way through and around, but if you're looking from the bottom up, that horn can look longer than it really is. You know, the regulations clearly say that they have to be full curl. Those horns come out and they have to come all the way around 360 degrees. And if it's just a little short, it's not a legal ram. These overboots have been on a lot of sheep hunts with me. I love these things. People have different names for them. They slip right over your boots. They're lightweight. They're durable. Yeah, the bottom's real, real nice. Yeah? Yeah. Any ice on the bottom? No, no ice on the bottom. If there is, if there is, uh, these soles are doing a really good job on it. And what they allow you to do, you have a waterproof membrane. Mine have a hard sole. They make these with and without the hard soles. Um, I prefer the hard soles because you can slip them right over your boots and you have excellent traction, excellent stability when you're crossing uh, streams and rivers. You can use these when you're deer hunting down on Kodiak Island. You can use these when you're sheep hunting in the mountains. I've taken these mo on moose hunts and caribou hunts. For just a couple of ounces here, uh, these overboots, oh, they're perfect. The next day, when we got up, we decided to hunt further up the drainage. Uh, perhaps we would run into a different group of sheep. So we made it to the top of this peak. It uh, was quite a workout, but what I wanted to do was take a look back over my shoulder. Anyway, it's a difficult area to stock a sheep. The sheep were there several days ago and moved to this mountain ridge. I wanted to come up to this area First, double check to see whether they were back there, and they're not. Um, second, to make sure that they're not on this rocky cliff right behind me. There are uh, nine sets of sheep tracks right below me here. You can see where they crossed from that other side over to here a few days ago, and then made their way up and up the drainage. So now, from here, we've checked this box. We know also that this mountain range behind us is just full of ice and snow. It's really not um, that great a habitat for the sheep. And so it's unlikely that they're back here, which sends us that direction. So we're gonna walk this ridge and just look in ravine after ravine after ravine for these sheep. And we'll just keep going as long as it takes until we find these bad boys. We went up some terrain that was almost vertical. It was one of these situations where you take uh, two steps forward and one step backwards as we're climbing hand over fist to try to get to the top of this, this mountain. Okay, we just came around the corner and I spotted way the heck up there on top of this ridge skylined um, with a group of rams. We can see clearly two nice rams and then there's a half curl ram with them, and there's some others that keep coming up to the ridge and back down, and we can't get a real good look at them because they're not coming up for very long. So we're looking at a way to try to approach these rams, and they are way up there at the top of this doggone peak, and it must be 8,000, 8,500 feet up there. It's unbelievable how, how high they are and they have the ability to see everything below. And so from here, there's nowhere we can go without them seeing us. The question is, how long will they see us and um, what will they do to react to it? In advance, I decided that I was going to try something that I had not tried before. I was going to uh, try the whites. And I had brought whites with me on sheep hunt after sheep hunt, only to carry the whites home uh, having not used them. I prefer not to be seen by sheep, and if I can avoid being seen, that's my approach. 
And in all my sheep hunts in the past, I was successful in doing that. On this sheep hunt, Matthew and I were in a situation where the sheep were going to see us. So what were we going to do? We're trying to put a stock on these sheep, but we had to cross this wide open area there, like on this little island. And so we put on those white things and we started just walking right at them. I was surprised they let us get in within maybe like 300 yards or so when we started off at maybe 1,500 yards away. We just kept walking and looking through our binoculars. They were watching us, I think, harder than we were watching them. And those sheep look a lot, like just looked at us like, what are those crazy, stupid looking sheep down there? <laughs> Something's really wrong with them because they're walking on two legs. <laughs> We're about five miles in. We've been hunting all day. We've been hunting hard the last several days. So now's the time to take care of your feet. I carry a, a liner sock and a thicker sock. Uh, in addition, I carry some foot stuff, you know, uh, just little band-aids like pads. You can use moleskin or band-aids or whatever kind you, what you like. But if you start getting some hot spots on your feet, you need to put some of these things on it or stop and take a break if you're in a good spot to do some spotting for sheep. Take your boots off, take your socks off, let your feet kind of cool down a little bit. Matthew got into shooting position. And so they kind of looked at us funny and then they're like, yeah, those, uh, those sheep aren't our kind of sheep. So they kind of, they, they were all bedded down. So they got up and they kind of slowly just walked off. And so we never really got close enough to get one. So as we watched these sheep and Matthew looked for a good clean shot, it just never presented itself. He was patient, he patiently waited, but the shot just didn't come. And that's okay, because here we were coming to the end of this day, and Matthew was reflecting on the fact that last year he was patient and the clean shot came, and he was able to take a beautiful doll sheep last year, and so it was okay not to be able to get a sheep on this day. So that trip, sadly, we ended up not getting a sheep because time constraints. I had to get back to school to do homework and that fun stuff. So uh, I, don't know, I think it might just spend the next weekend. Uh, my dad and Sh Dr. Sean went up there. I love sheep hunting. Sheep hunting is my passion. And I just didn't have enough days out in the field with Matthew on this sheep hunt. So I was eager to get back into the cub and get back out into the field. Off I went, back into sheep country, brought the super cub in, made camp, and the next day went up the mountain after them. And the wind was blowing and howling. Uh, you could barely take a step forward without the risk of being blown over just that nasty, gritty sheep hunting weather. Um, and quite frankly, when I'm in it, I love it. What a great hunt, man. This, uh, this sheep, he eluded us for a number of days. And every time we'd get up on this guy, he seemed like uh, he'd just move farther away. So finally on this last day, we got to below, right below where he was. And he's sitting up there just looking down on us. And we couldn't get any closer. We just couldn't get any closer. So we sat and we sat and we sat. And we waited six hours in the brush just waiting for this sheep to move so we could get in on him. And finally, at 3.30 in the afternoon, he moves. So what did we do? We made our move. And we went up the mountain after him. And up we went. And finally, we just peeked over this ridge. And it was just before 6 p.m. And there he is, 190 yards away. And he was just starting to walk away, quartering away a tiny bit. 
and it was now or never at that point. One shot right through, right behind his shoulder and came out the neck on the other side. Uh, good clean shot, sheep went down. 80 to 100 mile an hour winds with peak gusts over 100, about blowing us off the mountain. We got to this bad boy, eight year old ram, and uh, we're gonna try to take care of him and get back down to the plane. It's gonna take us a couple of hours to get down to the plane at least. We have one ring here, two ring, three, four, five, and then it gets really tricky. But this is why it's so difficult out in the field to judge your ram. If it's not full curl, you don't want to be counting on looking at these through a spotting scope at 100 yards or 200 yards or 300 yards when we're having a difficult time sitting right here and determining whether these are rings or not uh, because it could possibly be one two three four or it could possibly be only one and two rings um, and that's where the expertise of a biologist or a um, taxidermist comes into play there another fantastic season of sheep hunting when you put my doll sheep up against matthews from the year before you swear they were they were brothers um, I think mine was a little bit bigger, but Matthew might disagree with me.